Hello there, everyone. How are you? I am doing good. Oh my God, what this is full moon, right? Full moon, yes, full moon. Last one was the moon. So I'm like, what moon energy video is it? Whoa. <coughs> so full moon is coming up here or is here when this goes out. I'm not sure when. Right around the time of the full moon. It'll go out somewhere. But May Day sale coming up. Um, May 1st and 2nd. Yeah, this will probably be released on the 1st and the blog will go out on the 2nd. So May 1st and 2nd, two days only. All tarot and oracle card readings are half off. And before we get going into our reading, I want to share a project I've been working on. So a while back I started what I call Windows into Worlds. And um, when I first started, I just couldn't stop doing these. They just kept coming out. It does it in art. And all of a sudden I realized I had um, a potential oracle deck. And so, yeah, working on this project, Windows into Worlds. <clears throat> and thinking about making it into an oracle deck. And unlike the affirmation cards, which are handmade, this would be a proper printed deck, not a crazy handmade deck. Like the other ones are. I'm thinking like 50 cards. It's really, you gotta have at least 30 or more, I think, for me at least, for a good mix for divination. And really more like 40, 50 is a better bet. So I've been working on this. So, um, no idea. I really have no. See, this is a. This is the back. This is what it looks like before all this stuff happens. And there is an art class on this one that's going to be going out for sale with the um, this particular piece in the next month or so when I get my act together. But yeah, that's what it starts out as. I have a couple. So that's. The start. Do I have another one? I do. Okay. And then, if I can get one out, and then, yeah, they just kind of keep progressing until they're all layered up to the point where they say done. But yeah, working, working on this one. I don't know when it's gonna go out. Really, just don't know. Cause I gotta do the painting still. Because this represents about half. This, I think this is around 25 pieces in varying. Like this one's not done. That one's way too linear. And I'm not sure I like that one. Anyways, it may get tossed. It has a couple extras. I'm liking her so far a lot. She has some contrast, but I like that one a lot. These are partially done. I was working on these yesterday. But so I'm working on this, so keep your eye out. And this this one is going up, is an art class that will be going up in the next month or so. Because I've told myself, get your act together, May and June, art classes are going up. So keep your eye out for that too, art classes. But don't forget May Day sale, May 1st and 2nd. Half off all tarot and oracle card readings, two days only. And then after that's the Heartlight Transmission, the Light Language sale for solstice, but that's still a wee ways away, so just, just lodge it in if you're interested in any of the light language stuff, though. <sighs> okay, you know what? I feel like we need some energy clearing. I've been seeing lots of um, things in the areas that I hang out online and stuff with people being like, oh, I'm overwhelmed, I'm tired, things are... The, the energies have been really big. Yet again, this has been a really big year for things. So just kind of roll with it. Flow. Don't try and fight it too much. I think the more you fight it, the more it's going to like suck the life out of you. So if you can take an extra nap or just even lie down and rest and be quiet, because sometimes just even that can really make a difference. And make sure you're getting your water and electrolytes too, because... Although those are really important to processing the energetic stuff. Uh, the electrolytes help keep the electrical charge of your body happy, which helps you process um, 
big internal changes that are happening. So let's just start with a little energy clearing and then we'll launch into the reading. So deep breath in, <sighs> noisy exhale out. And exhaling noisily stimulates the parasympathetic systems to help you relax. So let's just whoo, let that sound permeate in. Just let it clear away what needs to be cleared. No hanging on to what's trying to leave. This has become my main energy clearing tool for myself since I've bought it. I love this thing so much. Okay, set that down. I actually have all three decks today. We're doing good. This moon, we are using the Unfinished Tarot just because we've had so many big energies and so much like huge stuff going on. I felt like we needed something fun. Um, I rarely, rarely do trades for readings, and this was one I did do a trade for a bunch of stuff um, from a colleague. Laura Lee and Juliet created this deck, and it's just an absolutely fun deck. I have no idea if you can even buy it, but they're just brilliant. So if you ever come across the Unfinished Tarot, it's not particularly a tarot, but um, it's more of an oracle deck with some tarot things thrown in it, but it's a really fun deck. And it's cheeky and fun and really, really right on. So, okay, let's pull the... So we got ice cream cone. A little thing of ice cream cones. You know how... If, did you, if you ever took drama in high school, you had to do that mime thing. I hate miming. Which is funny because I love Kate Bush who it really explains a lot of her facial features because she studied mime. And even though I love Kate Bush, I hate having to mime. I'd rather talk. I like to talk. I do videos. Hello. But um, anyways, you could, usually I had the lamest, lamest ideas for the mime fiction. It was, I was like one of the first things you had to do. God got it over with. One here. I had one brilliant idea. One brilliant idea for my mom, and it involved an ice cream cone. I was a little kid walking along. These are really hard to do because they're black line drawings on red. Sometimes they don't show up very well. But so I'm walking along doing the mime walk with my ice cream cone, and then it falls off. The ice cream does. And then I pick it up and put it back on. The only brilliant idea I had for a mime. The rest all sucked. I hate mime. But anyways, back to the ice cream cone and what we're dealing with. Okay, I'm probably not going to show this one too much because it's really difficult. But the ice cream cone, and it's kind of melting there. So it says two things to me. Are we not enjoying things because, well, we're just like too much. So our ice cream cone's melting away and we're not using it, eating it, enjoying it, relishing in it. So how can we, you know, enjoy what's happening? Where can we find some joy in what's going on? Because there's been so I think there was like a magnetic storm too in here somewhere. I, it's just been like ooh, crazy, some big energies floating around there, out there in the universe. So it's really easy to get caught up in those big energies and be like, Big energies, oh my god, I have the big energy angst, and I can't, ah. And I feel like the ice cream cone is this little reminder to stop and be like, wait a minute, okay, so yeah, there are, and I maybe have the big energy angst going on, but how can I enjoy my ice cream cone during this whole time? Whatever that ice cream cone is for you. How can you enjoy it? How can you be like... Okay, I can find the ease here. I can find the space in this. I can find something yummy in it. And I'm not going to let it melt away like this ice cream cone starting to melt. I don't know if you can see the little puddle of ice cream down there. But yeah, so how 
are you making sure that you're not getting too caught up in the angst of it that you can't bring any fun in. Fun's a good thing sometimes. Sometimes when things get really too big, finding some levity, um, finding a way to ease into a different modality. For me, I would use painting to do that. Painting, for me, art is a way that I'd move into a new modality and not get stuck in, in that angst of of, you know, big energies. Because I think there can be this propensity to focus on the big energy and not what else is going on along with it. And sometimes if you take that focus off the big thing and look at the peripheral little, peripheral, peripheral little things, it can um, make a big difference. Just a second here. Okay. I don't know why I tell you I'm leaving because you'd never know. So one way, here's one way I kind of take this ice cream cone energy into my life and use it when I have, there's a lot going on. And so I've been working, trying to work more loosely. This is from um, Soulful Expression 2, Annie Hammond's class. This is from a class. I like how she turned out. But then, because Annie Hammond always inspires me to paint in a non-systematic way, in a way that's not in my comfort zone. I did this. Totally different from what I normally would be working on. I did her. And then I decided to go on and do a mono, not a monochromatic, an analogous piece. Analogous just means I'm using colors that are in line. So, this one was yellows, blues, blue, green, and greens. So there she is, and she's kind of, it was a weird kind of challenging face, and that's why I picked the face, because the face was kind of challenging. And then I did a hand, which, let me tell you if you ever painted hands, is really challenging. So this is how I work through that big energy and taking it away from the big energy and putting it into something else. And challenging myself in a new way and you don't even really need to challenge yourself. You can just enjoy your ice cream cone. But um, I do find doing stuff that kind of pushes me out of my comfort zone with art can really help me bring that face for painting. Bring that ice cream cone to the forefront. So enjoy your ice cream cone. Eat it. Don't let it melt. And enjoy it. Okay, so the other deck we're using this month is the Cosmic Tarot. Love this deck. This is one of those decks that I almost I thought about not buying and then I just bought it anyways. I really enjoy it. It's a staple. I like the devil and the weird corporateness of the devil card in this deck. It has kind of a weird little anti-corporate thing. I think it came out in the 80s, so you know, think Wall Street, Green Gecko. Alrighty, let's pick two cards. Ooh. I was going to laugh if this was the Empress, but we do not have the Empress this reading. That would have been kind of funny. Nope. Okay, so we got the ice cream cone telling us to focus on the peripheral things around the big energy and really just focus on the joy, enjoy what we do have, and not get so caught up in the, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, big energy. <coughs> so, okay. The Fool is our first card. So, hello. Ice cream cone, the Fool. Not getting caught up. The Fool gets caught up in the journey. The Fool gets caught up in the process. It's not about the end result. It's about what do I learn? What? can I absorb and doing so in a manner that brings in joy once again we're back to that aspect of joy with this reading and being willing to step into that energy of yeah I can go through this big angstful energy with Elan and joy and have a little fun while I'm doing it and see what happens I don't know where it's gonna go and that's okay I can just kind of go along with this and skip along 
and see where it takes me. I don't have to get caught up in knowing exactly where it's going to go, that it's so big, that it feels overwhelming, that maybe it's uncomfortable even, that I don't want to deal with it, that it's no fun. So the, here's the thing. How can you find that fun in that big energy? How can you find the lessons and learn them with a bit of joy and not be like, <sighs> and just kind of, you know, twitch, sit there twitching. So I think, you know, that this is being mirrored with the ice cream cone of enjoying things and not worrying too much about just what the heck is happening, how it's going to go down, how it's going to end, what you're going to be at the end. Is it ever going to end? Because there's just so much going on. So much going on. It's just been kind of a crazy year. Even before that, because the collective energies of this of the larger world have been really kind of up and down a lot and all around. It's like, it's kind of like a zipper ride, you know, those zipper things at the amusement parks. It's kind of what it's like. <coughs> and, they col and the very large collective energy. It, it gets really crazy there sometimes. So our second card is not the Empress. I would have laughed hardcore because last two moon <laughs> we've had the Empress. We do not have her today. We have the Fool and the Lovers. And the Lovers aspect that's been coming up lately is not... Well, there's always the choice. There's always the choice. Because you don't have to choose to do this. But the aspects of unification, of unity, of uniting what is seemingly opposites. How do we bring things together as opposed to pull them apart? How do we make things whole? It's like pulling taffy, kind of. It's kind of the energy. It's like to get salt water taffy, you have to pull it and pull it and pull it to get this little gooey confection. Because if you don't do the pulling part, it's cucky. So, so you kind of have to keep pulling at it to get it to, you know, unify. And that's kind of the energy. It's like there's this pulling, and it feels like we're being pulled apart. But the pulling apart is to unify us. Does that make sense? Think of the taffy. You know, candy canes too kind of have a twisting thing you have to do to them to get them to go into that candy cane land. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's probably like, I don't ever make candy canes. Neither have I. But I read about it on Martha Stewart once. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Hell no. I need like two people for that. But the lovers, the unification process, how can we unite? Where are the, where are the commonalities? Not even similarities. What do we hold in common? And how can we bring that to the forefront as, oppo forefront as opposed to what is not in common with each other? How can we bring a unification aspect to everything we do? To bring this in with the world. And looking at, you know, I feel like that unification is on so many multiple levels. It's not just on the personal level. It, it's you as the microcosm, your social spheres, your greater acquainted spheres, and on out into the greater world, into the universe. So how can we unite things? How can we bring our commonalities together? after we've had went through this taffy pulling process to come to that point where we could do that. It's like we have to be in this taffy pulling, you know, pulled apart thing to have the ability to see what we have in common, to see what we share and not what we don't share. I feel like that's really important right now is to see the commonalities. And that doesn't mean you have to agree with someone. You just want to find... What are those strands, those threads, those atoms, subatomic? I don't know. It, it can be small. It doesn't have to be big. You don't have to like them. You don't have to be the friend. But you do want to see their commonalities within them. And you can be like, okay, I see that. And I acknowledge that. And they may not know that. They may not be, they may still be being pulled in the pulling part. Whereas you're reaching the 
area where you're like, yes, I can see what we have in common. I can see that now. And I welcome that to come out in you. Because there's some things you're just not going to be able to, you know, especially in the greater things, in the greater, you know, world and stage and that kind of stuff. You're not going to be able to reach out really so much and pull in friendship. If there's ability to find the commonalities and pull in friendship, great. But you don't have to even talk to him. You just want to see what's common. What's in common with that? What's in common with this? How am I in common with this person that I don't agree with? How can I find the common commonalities in Russian spam bots and myself? That one might be a stretch, but that's kind of what you're looking at. Is there a commonality and can you find it? And it may not, you know, appear on the surface right away. So don't stress if you don't see it. Just, just be like, I wonder what that is and think about it. So to recap, just before we head into our information card, we got ice cream cone, which is really hard to see. Reminding us to enjoy things, not to get caught up in what's going on and be too stuck there. Let yourself enjoy it, work around the edges and see what happens. And you know, whatever your ice cream cone is, enjoy it and eat it. Don't let it melt in a little puddle. Then we got the fool that echoes that, that sentiment of being, being willing to change joyfully, to be willing to learn with lightness and levity and joy and fun. And not be like, oh my god, I must learn this because it's so big and heavy. My change must be a big, heavy millstone that weighs me down. It's not what you're looking for. You're looking for levity. You want to bring in the levity right now. And I said, sometimes if you work the periphery of the big energy, it's easier to take and feels less overwhelming. So keep that idea of, you know, kind of move out of it to the side of it and see where it takes you. Which brings us to the lovers and kind of pulled apart and making the choice to see commonalities within ourselves, within our spheres of moving through this world. So find the commonalities. Don't, don't get caught up in, this is different. This is not what I want. This is, what's the commonality? It's a commonality in the big energy. What's the commonality in the fool and bringing love. What's the commonality in ice cream cone? What's the commonality in the lovers? The lovers, I have to say, this one's okay. It tends to be, I don't hate this one. I don't love it either. It tends to be a card that just, uh, really, I, the betrayals leave me kind of feeling very bland or outright hating them. One's okay. There's a couple I just really hate. Um, brain cramp. The, um, I just had the brain cramp, but luckily I have their sticker. The, um, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Yeah, brain cramp. I have their sticker on my, um, on a watercolor palette. <laughs> So I was looking. Um, the Wheel of Fortune tour has probably one of my favorite lovers ever. Oh, it's just beautiful. And it's not hetero. It, 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 and I think that's part of it because it's like they're all really kind of male, female. They're all kind of the same. And some of them are more gaggy than others. But let's pull a affirmation card now that you had to listen to me whine about how I really don't like many of the lovers depictions on intro okie dokie what we got here oh the soul knows the soul knows so your soul knows what to do it, it's going to guide you so trust your intuition trust your gut trust what's going on inside trust it because your soul knows your soul knows when you need to work the periphery and find your ice cream cone to enjoy the soul knows how you can move through this big energy and learn with joy. The soul knows how you can find the commonalities after you feel like things have been pulled apart. So trust the soul. Trust the soul, people. Don't don't be like, oh no, it's lying to me. Because that happens, you get this strong hint. 
hit of like, yes, I know. And then five minutes later, you're like, mm, maybe 10 minutes, you're like, oh, two hours from now, you've totally talked yourself out of it. That takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot more energy than just be like, yeah, I know. I have this big, strong hit. My soul knows. I trust it. Much more energy to keep talking yourself out of what that hit was. So, <clears throat> really nice reading there, I think. Um, uh, different energies than we've been having for the past little bit. So, open up to things. Be joyful. Don't get caught up in the angst is basically the gist of everything. And, you know, what's, what's in common? It's much more fun to find commonalities than the things that aren't in common. Okay. Let's do a little light transmission. So do I want the pyramid today or not? Pyramid. It's over here. Let's use it. Are you so much at the near Sanche? Yeah, Toshi can die, got the knees and no wake. Yeah, can near the Kitaruski, okay. Men are cashing a poo tachi. Shami cani no, cuckoo ho. Had to sit on me and a sashi. Shan cani no ho. Yeah, he sing me. Yes, in the commas a car to me. In a casa got a shinny canoe. Men are so. Who has a knocking Mena katala si shana ishe. Uti. Mokata isi katni katatahi. Opahi. Opahi kani niashka. Kani ishka mo. Makati. Mo sin chen. Chena kaso. Hene kesho koma si chicha. Hosh. Hosh. Kine kisa da. Oye ke. Name seta jisha. Nanny Kunahan. Hushe, Hushe, make her. In a kitty hole. Oh, look at my ear. Hush. Had it gone a high hill. Oh, what a dummy can't arrack a set on a shkanae. Better got tea. Kuni, Kunashi, ku. Hammer cutter a sinny chani. Yaki, Kuni can, Chimuko. Many kadi ki kode chakashane katari. Hush, hush ki hai. Hush ki moharo kirko. Kirko kirko mia mia kesiko mia kaha. Jake. There you go. That is the full moon reading, full moon energies for April. Um, you can always. Book a personalized moon reading. Links are down below. It has uh, all the other pertinent links and informations. Go out there and be the love, people, and have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the new moon in May. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and go out there and be the love.